Hello and welcome to another Streetwise Opera Live session with me, Gavin, from Manchester. A big hello to you from wherever you're watching today. We're going to be looking at the opera The Cunning Little Vixen by Janacek today. And if you were watching on Monday, Liz gave us a great introduction to Janacek and his use of folk tunes in the opera. Uh, today we're going to have a look at the theme of nature through that opera and see uh, a few of the creatures that might be singing within the opera. But before we do, let's uh, warm up our bodies a little bit. We're going to, as you've watched me before, uh, I like to get rid of any tension in our shoulders. So let's take our shoulders right up to our ears. Call that about 12 o'clock, an imaginary clock. Find where 3 o'clock would be, which is about halfway down. And let's find where six o'clock would be, which is all the way down. Brilliant. And then backwards, halfway up again to nine o'clock and all the way back up to 12. And it'll do an hour at a time of that imaginary clock face. So here we go. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Hold it. Let's go backwards. Eleven, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Amazing. Great. OK, let's have a bit of a shake out. I'm going to start warming up our voices, ready to be singing this amazing music today. So can we make uh, a bit of a strange noise? It's a bit like a horse kind of noise. Uh, are we going to use that uh, to kind of warm up our voices throughout our range? So first of all, let's use that kind of horsey noise. And let's see if we can do from the bottom of our range to not too high, just to kind of warm up a little bit. So we're going to go. Let's do that together. Great. Can we keep going? Can we go a figure of eight this time? Great. We can sing on that noise. We're going to sing this tune. What a strange noise to be waking up our voices with. Hopefully your lips are nice and buzzy, starting to get our resonance working. Can we try, that was a lip trill, that was called a lip trill. Can we try, a little bit harder, let's try a tongue trill, which sounds a little bit like a phone ringing. Can we try that? So we're going to do a... So it's your tongue vibrating just on the roof of your mouth. Let's try that. Have a go. And let's see what we can do again. We can do a bit of a siren through our range. Have a go with that one. It's a bit harder, but have a go. Great. Lovely. And let's try one of the sounds to, before we start singing. We're going to try a loud, a, a low, sorry, a low zzz sound, a little bit like an insect. So we're going to go Be like one of those really annoying blue bottle flies you might find in your house. Okay, hopefully that's just kind of warmed up our, our vocal mechanism a little bit. We're going to start to sing this tune on R. I'll sing it to you. Sing that with me. Sing it again. Great, let's try that same tune a little bit higher. Let's try it together and. Time. 
So we have learnt with that warm up the first tune of the opera The Cunning Little Vixen by Janacek, set in an enchanted forest. Hence the shirt. Thank you, Harriet, for your comment. I've already seen it. Amazing photograph of a production uh, that you might see a representation on stage of what an enchanted forest in the Czech Republic might look like. So you can see there's a few animals there. Obviously, there's a fox. The vixen is a, a female fox, is a male fox. There's some insects about. So singers have trained for years and years and then they end. Oh, great. My, what's my first role? Oh, I'm going to be a dragonfly. So they, we have to make these sounds of different insects. So we'll experiment with that in a, little, in a little while. But we've just started with the amazing tune that we hear at the beginning, which is a bit like a folk tune, like Liz was teaching us on Monday. Uh, it's a moonlit night, summer night, and you hear the chorus off stage singing that music to our, exactly as we just sung. So let's see if we can sing that again. Sing it twice. Here we go. And so it's moonlit night. It's it's kind of late in the night time. Well, it's dark and there's a moon out. So I think lots of the animals in the in the forest. Are nocturnal and they're just starting to to wake up so can we stretch through that phrase so that the the highest point of your arm is going to be the last note so we could we sing that together with our stretching it sounds like this and another stretch think a fox, the vixen, would not probably look like our stretches. So I'd think about a fox, it's a bit like a cross between a dog and a cat. So my cat I've been looking at the last few days to get some ideas and she often lies with her paws crossed underneath her chin. So I wonder if we can start like she's having a lovely dream and then she's just having a bit of a stretch. She stretches her paws out in front of her and then brings them back under a chip. Let's try that. We're singing that music together. A bit more fox-like this time. One, two. And again, another stretch. Beautiful, we've started playing these animals in this enchanted forest for the cunning little vixen. Amazing, magical opera. Next bit, the chorus keeps singing on R off stage. They sing this tune, lovely folk kind of tune. <laughs> so I'll sing that to you in little bits. The first bit goes. <laughs> sing that back to me, one, two. Ah, lovely. Next bit. Ah, let's sing that together. Ah, so the whole phrase sounds like this. Ah, let's try that together. One, two. Ah, And then the second phrase is almost the same, just finishes slightly lower. Sounds like this. <laughs> Try that with me. One, two. <laughs> so the whole theme sounds like this. <laughs> like Liz was saying on Monday, lots of small uh, rhythmic snippets repeated, very folk tuny. So let's try that whole theme together on our one, two. Great 
great. So in the opera, the chorus, do sing that on R. I've put some words to it, see if we can remember uh, the tune a bit more. And my words are, nature is calling. Listen to me, is it nature? It's kind of trying to influence everybody. A bit like if you were watching South Pacific on TV the other day, a bit like Bally High is calling people in the wind across to the magical island of Bally High. In this opera, nature um, is king. Nature is queen, maybe. Nature is king or queen, <laughs> whichever, whichever you'd like to think of. So can we sing that? Let's put those words to the tune this time. It's going to sound like this. Nature is calling, listen to me. Nature is calling, listen to me. Let's try that together. One, two. Nature is calling, listen to me. Repeat it. Nature is calling, listen to me. Nature is calling, listen to me. So I've invented those words, but I think you might be able to come up with a few suggestions that are probably better than mine. So if you can imagine the beginning of the opera, it's a moonlit summer night, and the theme is nature, animals waking up nocturnal animals, uh, maybe the magical world of nature. See if you can come up with any alternative lyrics. And in a little while, I'll have a look. I can't promise to read all of them out, um, but I might have a look at a few of them um, and see uh, what your suggestions are. So let's even go from the beginning. We know what we know already is that we start with our, our stretching music. We sing that twice. And for now, we sing, nature is calling, listen to me, nature is calling, listen to me, twice. Let's have a go at that. And I'm going to do a little bit of an introduction this time. So imagine the curtain is just about to rise on that lovely, magical scene that we saw at the beginning. Invent your own in your own imagination, what, what your forest might look like if you were directing this opera. So here we go. The moon is out. Imagine that some of these animals are starting to fly around. The dragonfly that I told you about earlier on, a singer is playing the part of the dragonfly. So I thought we could use the sounds that we warmed up with earlier on. It sounds a little bit like a dragonfly to me if we use that lip trill noise. If we do. <laughs> Imagine you might, if you're on stage, you might have to try and look like you're a dragonfly. Amazing flashes of green and blue everywhere. You might have to be moving around quite fast. So if you've got space where you are, or you might just want to hover. And uh, let's have the sound of your wings. Maybe see if you can move like you're flapping your wings at the same time. Let's try that together. One and a two and a... That's our first animal noise. That's an insect, isn't it? First noise, a dragonfly. Number two is going to be the frog. And the frog becomes quite important later on in the opera. So I wonder if we can use our phone ring, tongue trill kind of sound for the frog. So if I play this. Does that sound like a frog? Maybe. Let's try that together. One and a two and a one. You can pick your own pitch. <laughs> See if we can look like a frog 
the same way that we're doing it, because obviously a singer is going to have to, be, have to play the part of a frog convincingly. So they've got big eyes. See if you can make your eyes quite big. They've got webbed feet. Have a go while we sing that. Let's try that. So we will have done our dragonfly. Dragonfly noises on our frog coming up. So that's two animals that we've learned. The third one, I think we could have some other flies, maybe the blue bottles that we did earlier on. Maybe the frog eats that fly. So you can remember to do that fly. That's your third noise. And my fourth animal, I'm just going to invent a strange kind of bird noise. So I'm going to sing this. But you can invent your own animal for your fourth sound. You can either copy me or invent your own noise for a different animal. So my last bird-like noise is this. Some kind of bird. In my imagination, that sounds like a bird. <laughs> so we've got dragonfly, frog, insects, general insects, and fourth one, freestyle. So when we get to that point, when we've had the moonlight, we've got our stretch, we've got the nature is calling, listen to me music, and then we've got animals, and then we're going to go back to nature is calling, listen to me music, and that'll be our whole scene. So before we do that scene, have we got any other suggestions for these words? Let's have a look. So, uh, Anita, Stars are a shining, wake up and see. Stars are a shining, wake up and see. That fits beautifully. I love that, Anita. Thank you very much. Clarence. Beneath the moonlight, open our eyes. Beneath the moonlight, open our eyes. Again, a really beautiful suggestion. Thank you, Clarence. Great, gorgeous. So, when we do our scene, if I can remember to play and watch uh, the, the lyrics on the computer, I'll try and use one of your uh, your suggestions. If not, I might default to singing my own words. Nature is calling, listen to me. At home, choose nature is calling, listen to me. Or if you can see those comments on Facebook, sing along with one of those sets of words or your own. Um, you can please yourself. <laughs> have, have a great time with it yeah so let's see if we can do the whole scene we've got the moonlight music we've got the stretch we've got that da 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 with whatever set of words you're going to use today is sunny go out and walk it's another one great thank you philip fab lovely so let's have a go right from the beginning here's the moonlight music get ready with your animals remember you can do them in any order don't copy the order i'm going to do and you might want to invent your own animal i'm going to just play that music so you can have an explore with your animals when we get to that point. Good luck. Here we go. The moon is rising. A stretching music on our... Oh 
Great. So that's the first scene. That's the opening scene of this magical opera. Already experimented being some of the animals. So that tune that we've just sung with your amazing suggestions, you hear it quite a few times in the opera. Uh, also, at the wedding, the vixen gets married. She meets a beautiful fox, as you can see in the amazing photograph, I think, from Welsh National Opera's production, where they get married under a, a beautiful spreading cherry tree. What could be nicer? And guess what tune all the animals dance around to at a kind of folky kind of wedding dance? It's this tune. It's that kind of feel, isn't it? <laughs> very folky, very Eastern European folk dance. So we hear that tune a lot. So I'm going to take you right to the end of the opera right now. And the forester, at the beginning of the opera, the forester takes the vixen home to his farm, which is not a great idea because he ties her up with a lead. Not very nice for a wild animal. And she gets out of the lead. She's cunning, after all, it's in the title. And she escapes, but she kills all of the chickens on the farm, which is kind of what foxes do, really, isn't it? The forester should have known better. His wife isn't very pleased, and the fox, the vixen, escapes, thankfully. Into the woods, she meets a handsome fox. And on Monday, you sang with Liz that lovely uh, part of the opera where she realises that, oh, am I really beautiful? And she kind of sings a gorgeous um, aria. So I'm going to take you right to the end of the opera. She's had cubs now. She's had some cubs. The forester has been looking for the vixen. He's not seen her lately. That's all I'm going to say. But he's seen the cubs. <laughs> okay. And he comes to his favourite part of the forest, looking out over the meadows, the forest behind him. And he says, this is my favourite spot in the world. Um, he imagines people will come in the future and look at this view and be inspired. He says these words. They know that something from on high, some divine bliss surrounds them in his favourite place. That's what it sounds like and looks like to him. Some divine bliss surrounds them. Now, I would like you to think about your favourite place. It could be a real place that you've been to, it could be imaginary. For me, one of my favourite places is somewhere that I've been lucky enough to go to in Greece a few times. And when I come over the top of a hill and I see the sea stretch out in front of me, beautifully blue colour of the sea, and a little island in the distance, <sighs> it just makes me relax. So it could be somewhere like that. It could be your garden. It could be the view from your window. It could be your favourite walk. So imagine, or it could be somewhere in your head, somewhere amazing that you're going to invent. So I would like you to stand up in your room. Imagine that you're looking out at that view and you're going to sing these words. I'm going to teach you it first. The tune is, They know, sing that with me. They know that something that something they know that something let's try that they know that something from on high so as we sing the word high we've got to go a little bit higher in our voices from on high let's try that together from on high. So that whole phrase sounds like this. They know that something from on high. How was that? Should we try that together? They know that something from on high. Some Sing that again. Some divine bliss. Let's try that together. Some divine bliss surrounds them. Down 
last bit. Surrounds them. Let's try that together. Surrounds them. Great. So I'll sing the whole of that tune through. See, see if you can sing along with me and then we'll do it together. They know that something from on high Some divine place surrounds them How was that? Should we try that again? There's our starting note. They know that something from on high Some divine bliss surrounds them Great, let's try one last time. And remember, we're going to be imagining our favourite scenery stretching out in front of us as we sing it. Here we go, one last time. Here's our kind of dress rehearsal for this section, being the forester in his favourite spot. Here we go. Because they know that something from on high, some divine bliss surrounds them. luxuriating with the sun on his face and as he puts his arms into the grass a frog jumps into his hand and he says oh I recognize you from the beginning of the opera all those months ago and the frog goes twasn't me was my grandfather he used to tell me he used to tell me about you and hops off <laughs> The frog of hope, as Ray Trombetta told me this morning. Absolutely, I love that phrase, the frog of hope. And look at that beautiful photograph. Um, can you imagine being a singer wearing that amazing costume and having to sing? <laughs> so the frog gets the last word in this opera. Nobody else sings. So, all right, you might be dressed as a frog <laughs> and be singing with a croaky kind of, <laughs> but you have the last word in this magical opera. So I think what Janacek's trying to say is that no matter what happens in the world, you thought this was the same frog. No, it's actually, I'm, I'm the grandson of the person, the frog that you saw at the beginning of the opera. The world keeps turning, whatever is going on in the world, the world keeps turning. The circle of life keeps on going. Yeah, nature is doing its own thing. And as I've been looking out the window, I'm looking enough to see a few plants out of my window, they've been growing a great rate of knots over the last few weeks with all this sunshine and a bit of rain up in Manchester. Uh, so I get great comfort of seeing that nature is still out there waiting for us all when we feel safe enough to go and enjoy it again. So I hope you've enjoyed today's lovely um, opera, uh, The Cunning Little Vixen. That's the last bit that we're gonna do of the, the opera this week. So I hope you've really enjoyed it. It's a beautiful, magical opera. It's been great to share it with you today. And I hope to see you all again soon. But from me today, it's bye for now. Bye.